Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about a tiny country that has destroyed its long-standing stereotypes. Its climate isn't optimal and its soil isn't the most fertile. It didn't have enough resources for large-scale farming for a long time. Nevertheless, they were able to take second place over the last 50 years for the amount of exported food. That's outstanding considering the U.S. is in first place, a country that is 270 times larger. It's responsible for a quarter of the exported vegetables from Europe, and the annual income from exported produce is 80 to 90 billion dollars. Agriculture is varied and is developing in every direction from dairy farming to growing vegetables in greenhouses. So the Kingdom of the Netherlands, or Holland, is a small, densely populated country with a population density of 1,095 people per square mile. And the country is number 131 in area. So how do they do this? Well, if you look at the Netherlands from above, it doesn't look like a country with a huge agriculture industry, with its many fragments of planted fields that are small for modern standards. It would be hard to find a potato field, a greenhouse, or a pigsty in the country's main farming areas. Areas that wouldn't have any skyscrapers, factories, or other urban buildings. However, over half of the land in the country is used for farming and plant science. And this land wasn't a gift, since almost half of the country is below sea level. So they've had serious floods about 30 times over the last 1,200 years. And casualties from all the floods are in the hundreds of thousands. Storm waves broke through the sandbars and the water flooded deep into the country, submerging thousands of square miles of land. And throughout its history, the Netherlands has had to fight against natural disasters and protect its land from the sea. And it seems like the Dutch have been successful. Their flood defense, the Dutch Delta Works, has kept the country dry for over 30 years now. It is the world's largest project of its kind and is made up of almost 300 structures. So the Dutch have been famous worldwide for their farming technology for a long time. For example, local farmers in the 17th century created a new type of carrot that we all gladly eat because the wild white root was tough and bitter up until then. Dutch crop breeders domesticated it and made it into a sweet orange vegetable. They say the Dutch decided to make the carrots orange in honor of the royal family in the Netherlands having the family name Orange, and now their descendants from the Renaissance era continue to amaze the world. They stun with their necklace from a seemingly giant mirror that shines in the midday sun, and with their flashing out-of-this-world lighting at night from the expansive Dutch greenhouse complexes, their area is almost 173 acres. It's thanks to these unusual greenhouses that maintain a constant internal microclimate that the country that is 1,000 miles from the polar circle could become a world leader in exporting warmth-loving plants like tomatoes. Additionally, the Dutch hold first place in the world for exporting potatoes and onions, as well as second place in exporting vegetables overall. Over one-third of the world deals on the vegetable seed market are done in the Netherlands, since the country is praised for the seeds it produces. Those seeds were sold for about $1.7 billion in 2016, and they don't sell seeds for GMO products on the market. The Netherlands agriculture offers seeds for vegetables that are even capable of defending themselves against the main harmful insects. And one tomato seed, costing 50 cents, planted in a highly technological greenhouse, is capable of providing 150 pounds of harvest. Since 2000, Dutch farmers have been able to completely stop using pesticides. And since 2009, they have limited their use of antibiotics in food production by 60%. Now, 50 years ago, a local farmer named Jan Kopert grew cucumbers and used chemicals to fight off pests. After he found out that he was allergic to the chemicals, Kopert started studying the natural enemies of spiders and other insects. Now, his company, Kopert Biological Systems, is the world leader in fighting off pests using biological methods. The company has 1,330 employees in 26 subdivisions around the world. The company offers entire packets of maggots that they grow up into frenzied aphid fighters to combat pests. 
You can also buy a bottle of predatory mites that eliminate other mites. They offer other interesting natural methods as well. So the greenhouses have a climate control that lets them grow year round. In Westland, South Holland, the greenhouses take up 80% of all the farmland. So the local farmers don't have to worry much about the weather. Almost half of the Netherlands farming products come from this region. Now with the demand for chicken rising, Dutch producers developed and are implementing technology that lets them maximize their chickens' production while preserving humane relationships with them. As a result of the exact amount of water and nutrition required, potato farmers can obtain double the harvest. Since all the tomatoes are regrown from seeds every year, the old tops are sent to be recycled into boxes for the harvest. Only rainwater is used to water the plants. If you're watering a standard open field, you would need about 16 gallons of water, which goes down to just four for a greenhouse. In combating pests, farms use natural methods like an army of mites that don't eat tomatoes, but do eat harmful insects. So in 2017, the Dutch set a record. Dronten opened Europe's largest vertical farm in a nine-story building, 9,700 square feet in area. The vertical farm produces up to 30,000 bundles of arugula, chicory, red leaf lettuce, and lolo bionda lettuce weekly. But there are completely unimaginable projects too. Imagine a six-story building in the heart of a city with a full-scale farm on the roof. Can you see it? If it's hard for you, let me show you how such a farm in The Hague, the largest rooftop greenhouse in Europe. The greenhouse is 13,000 square feet in area, but that's not all. There's a 4,000 square foot rooftop fish farm nearby, and another 2,700 square feet are used for a farming recycling and packaging complex. So the farming model seems fairly simple, right? It's the so-called hydroponics. A farm buys fish fry, puts them in a water reservoir, and that produces more fry. While living, the fish enrich the water with their waste, and that water is later used to water plants. Thanks to automization of the processes, a full-size farm only needs three workers. A roof is capable of producing over 45 tons of vegetables and 19 tons of fresh fish yearly. And the fish waste isn't thrown out, but recycled for fertilizer. The products produced in urban farms are fresh fish, eggplant, pepper, cucumbers, tomatoes, and herbs, and have a low cost to produce. And usually they don't need a lengthy logistics chain since they're on the roof of the producers that sell what they grow. And of course, if we're talking Holland, we've got to mention the flowers, right? The Netherlands is still the definite world leader in selling flowers and gardening material today. And flower fields aren't just chaotically tossed around the country. They're mostly focused on flower auctions around Kukanov Park. Placing them near the auctions is extremely pragmatic and lets the farmers quickly deliver their products for sale. Now, tulip blooming season draws thousands of tourists from all over. And if you go, it's totally worth it. It's truly an impressive sight. Now, this country makes millions of deals in selling and buying flowers at country-sized scales daily. And the Dutch Flower Company has an enormous influence on the general climate of the flower market. It has a multi-century long history back since the times of the famous tulip mania, when speculation led to a serious crash. Now, since then, the Dutch have accumulated immense experience and developed connections that bring a stable income to the business. Not everyone knows that the majority of the company's offerings are grown outside of the Netherlands. Large producers from Europe, Asia, Africa, and South America send their harvest directly to the Netherlands, where they are offered by Flora Holland. This is done for economic reasons because the labor force in Turkey, Poland, and Kenya is many times cheaper than in old world countries. And the Dutch flower vendors turned into selectors with high quality equipment. So Flora Holland's main exchange looks like several large hangars connected with special above ground tunnels. The main flower warehouse is like a natural maze. The whole parameter is covered with endless refrigerated cases and each hall has a technology that carefully monitors changes in temperature and maintains the humidity balance. After trading is finished, a driver of the corporate electric car loads the goods and delivers them to a special train whose wagons are filled with purchased fresh cut flowers. Now, another thing that the Dutch started to sell is their knowledge and AIC technology. They can definitely call themselves leaders here since they are the world leader 
in implementing innovative technology in agriculture and ranching. And such an achievement for the country in agriculture is largely connected with their Wageningen Agriculture University, which is a key factor in creating technological agro startups and experimental companies. So the Dutch destroyed old myths and modern economic theories. For example, they mercilessly contradicted an assertion by Norwegian economist Eric Reinhardt and his book, How Rich Countries Became Rich and Why Poor Countries Remain Poor. Reinhardt wrote, Europeans noticed early that general wealth is only found in places where there is either no farming or it plays a small role. Now, if that's true, then the rule doesn't apply to the Netherlands. It doesn't work there for sure. Agriculture is the engine of the fairly powerful Dutch economy, and the country is in the top 10 countries in the world for GDP per capita. Not bad, right? Well, that's all for today. Leave me a like, comment, let me know the uh, most interesting thing you found out about uh, this uh, incredible country, and we'll see you again next time.